Hi, I'm Rob Tyree, Grace Wan Guild. I'm here with my compatriot, my companion, my colleague, Rick Botello. Um, and he's in a special place. And I wanted to uh, ask him a few questions and do a little introduction to Day of the Swan as well. So Rick, longtime member of the Grace Wan Guild, provocateur, student, teacher, dog walker. Where are you? Well, I'm here in Oslo on the way home, and I've just spent the last three days at the Oslo Freedom Forum, organized by the uh, Human Rights Foundation. Now, why did you choose to go there, Rick? You can go anywhere in the world, and normally you're in the U.S., and now you're in Oslo, that the home of the Nobel Prize. No, that's well, Stockholm. It, yeah, well, yeah, but let me just be very brief. I, I'll. Sure. Tell a very brief story. A friend of mine who was a journalist um, and activist who had his life threatened um, mm -hmm. um, decided to leave journalism world and he's now living in Toronto actually. And he told me about this conference and he was just chatting away and I looked at the website and I was just totally captivated by it. Um, but interesting enough, the reason why I came was because I come from, I, I come from a different perspective. My lens is focusing on equity but I wanted to understand the notion of freedom uh, in the human rights uh, foundation way. Um, and it's been a, a, an illuminating experience in terms of how people frame issues. Um, so uh, my head is still spinning. I've had so many vivid experiences here that I'm you, still making the context, sense. Is it, a, is it a big conference center? Are there thousands of people? Is it mostly journalists or is it it's, a mix of activists? Mix it with a lot of activists, policymakers, mm -hmm. and um, different organizations that are sympathetic to um, the whole issue of trying to usurp uh, dictatorship and tyrannies around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I've come away with a new perspective that, um, and, and you know, when you get in, in this interactive space, mm -hmm. You change other people's minds or begin to, and they change your mindset. And so you're coming at where... it from this large positioning of equity and yeah. inequity and getting balanced mm -hmm. to the world. And you're looking at a series of journalists, looking at journalistic freedoms. How are some of the early overlaps that you're seeing uh, in for your, your coming from of what you found? Well, let me just give you a brief story. Uh, sure. It was um, um, a, a Venezuelan activist. Uh, his name is Leopardo Lopez, who I'd never heard of before. Mm -hmm. He was the mayor of Caracas and he was in prison for seven years and he managed to get out. I won't go into the long stories, but, but he's uh, formed this Alliance for Freedom. And he spoke so passionately about being a freedom fighter and I listened and uh, about three quarters of the way through the workshop, I said, you know, I come from a different perspective, a different lens of equity. And I frame things differently. And I would like to just share different perspectives on this in such a way that we might think about how can we frame things in a way that mobilizes people. And I provocatively said, and it was a dichotomous question, which can be have function, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what's more important? food for the next three days or freedom. And he handled it very well uh, because it's a circular argument. You know, it's, you have to have freedom, you know, you, you need food for freedom, vice versa, but it's how you frame it that mobilizes people. Um, and so, and he also used the word freedom fighter. And I said, you know, not everybody wants to be a freedom fighter. It's a military metaphor. And I said, you know, I'm an equity, peacemaker, mm -hmm. and you have to explain what that means because mm -hmm. people don't know what equity means because it has multiple meanings. And so, and, and at the end, we, we had a little chat. I got a little photo with him, which I will cherish because this man is remarkable. And I've met so many activists here who've put their lives on the line, uh, just like um, Jamel uh, Khashoggi did. Um, and I watched the movie, The, the, the Dissident, and it's a must watch movie for everyone. It, it's my number one and number two documentary. Um, oh. And it's just been mind uh, blowing this uh, experience Rick, here. Uh, the tone, are, are these people angry? Is there a message oh. of anger coming? What's, no, the, no. what's the tone of what you're seeing in your groups in the group sessions? 
it actually, I mean, you know, if you watched uh, Leopardo yesterday mm -hmm. and, you, and he told his story, that he was in solitary co confinement for four years. Mm -hmm. And he is a, he's a master politician. Um, and he, he comes across as unscarred. I mean, it, you know, there's every reason for him to have horrendous post-traumatic stress disorder, mm -hmm. but he didn't show it. And he showed, a, 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 you know, a post-growth experience. Mm -hmm. And you would have never detected by his, you know, the way he emoted that he'd had these incredible traumas and experiences in his past. And actually, well, you know, people aren't necessarily going to come out and tell you that straight away. But what was apparent that it wasn't, it didn't come across. I mean, it was just, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to share this, this, this video link with him because yeah. uh, I just, just thought about it because sure. he is, and he's trying to develop an innovation platform okay. to take on the uh, cryptocracies of and autocracies of the world because mm -hmm. they're a network. Everyone tries to think about, you know, isolating Venezuela, but they have enough support from Russia, China, et cetera, mm -hmm. Iran, yada, yada. I mean, it's, it's, it's a network mm -hmm. of uh, autocracies and kleptocracies that are subverting the world. Um, and, and you can't take one from the other. So I said to him jokingly, mm -hmm. I said, well, you know, if you can just crack the wall in, in Venezuela, that will send a shockwave to the others. Yes. Because if they... And then they came up with different strategies about how to overcome autocracies. Right. And I went to another one, which was a nonviolent coup d'etat against uh, autocracies. Mm -hmm. And they described strategies. And I, I, I put it in one of my blog links. But yesterday morning, I, I've been percolating this idea for a while about the UN Declaration of Human right. Rights being um, completely inept. I mean, the UN can't do any, it's got no power whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided to, to rewrite the Declaration of Human Rights and reframe it as the Declaration of Human Rights and Social Responsibilities, changing the frame from an individual focus mm -hmm. to a social focus. Because one of the problems with these activists, unfortunately, they're solo operators, they're mm -hmm. forming networks. It's a loose network. They don't have network power. And in order to take on these uh, the systemic corruption, you have to have a systemic solution. We cannot rely on these targeted, terrorized activists mm -hmm. to change the system. They can alert us to the, the problems. Right. They can make us more aware, but it's going to take systemic solutions. And, it, and this gets in the field of sense-making, complexity science. You know, how do you develop synergies of different strategies that are contextualized in the language and the framing that evolves from the people up? Because if you come in top-down, like Freedom Fighter, and it, it turns off 50% of the population because they don't want to go on the streets and, and get shot at. Mm -hmm. Then and, and so I posed the idea. I says, well, what about what if you did a protest march, but then you had a passive resistance movement following it? Do you encourage everyone to do nothing for one week? Mm -hmm. And actually, it's been tried. Uh, they tried in Venezuela, apparently. Okay. And I didn't know that, that you okay. know, they, they didn't go to work for a week and they, they were willing to starve for freedom. Mm -hmm. you know uh, you know it was um i i'm just buzzing from yeah. as you can probably tell uh i can, tell. I, I can tell you're in a mode where you've got a lot of inputs and you've uh, you've brought a lot of your ideas to the table as well so in the conversation your ideas are becoming more powerful so what what kind of steps are in this space you're in now what kind of steps are you going to take in in leaving and coming back to America. Well, actually, I, I'm going to I'm going to continue writing this wiki blog post, and I never know week from week what I'm going to do. And mm -hmm. so, the next two articles are going to be revising the next thirty articles, doing, and I don't even know what I'm going to say yet. Right. Um, but but it's it's really a platform for raising consciousness about the ineffectiveness of documents like that, but also thinking well, what would it take? And I propose some ideas in the blog post, which people can read. 
-hmm. how we have to think systemically. So for example, the, the, the Oslo Freedom Forum was on at the same time it's that double. the Davos World Economic Forum was on. And so having watched the, 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 the movie, The Dissident, mm -hmm. um, I, I called the, 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 morning, uh, uh, the morning after watching that, uh, I posed a blog post uh, very provocatively called Why is the World Economic, the Davos World Economic Forum dismembered from the Oslo Freedom Forum? Oh my, oh my. Mm -hmm. And that, and to me, that's the pitfalls of reductionism. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, the, the you know, they're, they're just members. They're, they're just separated and they need to be integrated. And that's why, and, and interesting, I had a friend who was at the Davos and I sent him this blog post to mm -hmm. him um, because there is such a huge disconnect between the uh, corporations and the plutocracies of the world that have incredible power that could actually leverage and try and break down these autocracies when in fact they're enabling. So what we've just seen in Russia, for example, is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine if they use the economic power to say, you know, yeah. we're not gonna play with you anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, unless you get your act together and start creating a civil society, we're, we're not playing games with you anymore. And that's what's happening. So that's Dr. Rick, Dr. Side. Rick, where, where do we read you? Where do we read you, Dr. Rick? We want to catch up on your blog post. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, I, I, I'm just a, a minion uh, on LinkedIn with a newsletter that's got up to about three and a half thousand um, subscribers at the moment. But I, I, I'm, I'm an equity muse. I'm a, you've said provocateur, I'd say evocateur, um, because I ask questions that uh, challenge people's mindsets. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if we can't open, inspire, and align our mindsets towards uh, an equitable, regenerative, and sustainable future, we're toast. We're already burnt. <laughs> but the question, are we going to incinerate ourselves? Uh, and that's what we're heading for, unfortunately, unless we do some really radical transformation. So Rick, there's a, there's a historian named Arnold J. Toynbee who uh, studied the historical dialectic. Uh, and uh, one of the stories that he told was about the rise and fall of civilizations and he would probe different civilizations. And um, in looking at the rise of civilizations, Toynbee uh, had a, a theory called withdraw and return. Yeah, yeah. And where he told the story of Solon who left his home and went to Crete and learned new ideas, new yeah. innovation, new ways, and then brought them back to Athens, become a statesman. So I think that you are in a withdraw state into a outside yourself. And I look forward to your the with, to return to yeah. us in your community, not just in America, but in your world community. Yeah. Um, so Rick, last thing, uh, give, us a, give us a sentence of power to leave us with, to think and look forward to your next post. It's gonna be network power. Uh, how can we get the various uh, bodies of the world like the International Court of Justice, uh, the World Economic Forum, the World Health Organization, uh, United Nations, they have to form a coalition, a coalition that can create a domino cascade effect of destabilizing um, autocracies and, and dictators because it's a systemic corruption mm -hmm. with corrupt leaders. I call it the pathological symbiosis and we have to uncouple it. And if we can uncouple it, we can be, begin to deconstruct systemic corruption. And unless, unless we raise our game to say, what we've been doing is not good enough. And can we move on to the next? I mean, you know, that civilization, it goes through a decline and from mm -hmm. the ashes of the decline becomes a renewal. Mm -hmm. And we have to seize the day on that one. Otherwise, uh, it'll be the demise of civilizations as we know it, because it, we will be living in an inhabitable earth. Well, Rick, safe travels home. I, uh, I'm thrilled with the uh the emergence of these new ideas. And I look forward to working with the Equity Muse soon again. Okay, well, thank you very much.
Actually, it's interesting having a come. Oh, well, I'll just finish this off. I had a nightmare at three o'clock in the morning, hearing all these stories. Mm -hmm. I had a nightmare. It went into my subconscious, and I was. I won't go into the plot, but I was going to be assassinated in my own home. And I looked at the gunman. He, he was pointing to my head. I knew I was going to die. And I screamed as loud as I could, hopefully to haunt this man for the rest of his life. Um, and fortunately, I woke up and I was alive. So uh, that was a good experience. <laughs> good to learn. Thanks for sharing, Rick. Look forward to your return. Look forward to talking and working with you soon. All right. Okay. Thanks very much, Rob. Take care.